Are you an artist or illustrator looking to make money with your artwork, but you just don't know where to start? Well, I'm BJ Dell, and in this new series of videos, I'm gonna walk you through different ways that you can use to turn your artwork into money online. In today's first video, I'm gonna talk about Amazon and their KDP platform. It's gonna allow you to take your art and turn it into awesome, amazing coloring books that you can then sell on the Amazon platform. Nice thing about this, there's no sign-up fees, there's no monthly fees, and more importantly, there's no inventory, so there's no financial risk to you. The only thing that you have to invest is your time. I'm gonna show you my complete process, how I use Procreate, Adobe Photoshop, and Adobe InDesign to make a coloring book from start to finish. It doesn't matter if you're a professional, if you're just a hobbyist doing this on the side, if you're wanting to do this for extra money or turn it into a full-blown entrepreneurial business, there's something for everyone, so keep watching. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and jump into today's video. Like I said on the intro, today's video is all about how to take your artwork and turn it into amazing coloring books that you can sell on Amazon using Amazon's KDP platform. So KDP is Kindle Direct Publishing, and it's basically Amazon's self-publishing route for authors. But what's really cool in this case is that artists can use it too. Uh, so KDP has become pretty popular as of late, especially in the Merch by Amazon group. So if you've kind of found my channel, through there. You've probably heard about it before and are familiar, uh, but the big thing with KDP lately is everybody's doing low content or no content books. And basically what that means is you take a pre-made template for an interior that has lines on it, and then you sell it as a notebook or a journal or a diary and include your artwork or design as the cover. So this is really good for you know hitting or targeting certain niches for gifts and holidays and whatnot. They make you know great stocking stuffers and just cheaper gifts that people are more willing to buy sometimes than more expensive ones. So there's a big audience for it right now, but the thing that I love is the fact that you can take your artwork and do coloring books for it. It's a lot more uh, creatively fulfilling than just, you know, slapping your artwork on some line journals. Knowing that people are going to be coloring in your work is just really cool to me. And it's a lot of fun. So let's show you how to do it today. I'm going to be using the iPad Pro 12.9 inch along with Procreate. That's where my designs are. And then I'm going to be hopping over to the laptop next. I always finish up in Photoshop the designs and then transfer those over to InDesign to actually build the interiors for the book. So those are going to be the different programs that we're using today. I'm sure there's different routes that you can take, different things that you can do. This is just my workflow, my process, and I'll kind of guide you along the way to tell you why I use these and the difference that they make. So first thing starting out, if you work like I do with artwork and you do kind of like style that I use, um, and if you watch my videos before, I use a line layer and then a colors layer, highlights and shadows. If you drop out those colors, line or colors, shadows and highlights and are just left with the lines, you basically have a coloring book page. So I'll show you a coloring book real fast that I did. This is called Fudo Cats. This was a line of cats that I did last year that kind of incorporated food with cats, just kind of like a creepy but cute looking cat and just all different foods. So this one's a, a sushi one here, this book belongs to. And you can see just from the, the overall cover, it's very well printed. It looks professional. It looks like something that you're gonna buy in the store. Uh, when you get this set up on Amazon, they actually give you an ISBN number assigned to you. You don't have to pay for that, so that is nice. Um, I've got a copyright page here. And then you can see just the, the overall look is very sharp. It's good printing. Uh, I've got, I always do one, design per page that way instead of having another design here somebody's coloring with markers it's not going to bleed through because if you had you know another design over here you're not going to be able to see it once you start coloring on the other side uh, with kdp though they do not play well with blank pages so i always kind of put a description on the bottom of the previous page just to say hey this is what that is and it gets a you know you don't get dinged or uh reviewed for blank pages and you can see just flipping through here it just looks really really cool with my designs the way i do the coloring books i like to have this black frame around the designs 
just the way that these books are bound when you get really close to the center here if you do a full bleed and have the artwork going across the entire page it's going to be really hard to color in this area here and then also too if somebody wants to pull out one of these pages or tear them out it's going to tear into the artwork so if they're careful this gives you a little bit more leeway to not cut into that artwork and that's one of the reasons why too that i switch over to photoshop later so we'll talk about that here shortly so that is it for that i'll put a link in the description if you guys want to check out the listing on that um now let's get back to procreate so if you already have designs done, the first thing you have to make sure is that your resolution is super, super high. You want these things sharp when they're printed out. Um, so if you already have artwork around, make sure that it's a high resolution. Uh, for example, what I usually use 4,500 by 5,400 and 300 DPI. That's the, the basic merch by Amazon sizes. These are a little bit different because these are from a card game that I did last year or a couple of years ago, actually now uh, called Fuster Clucked. So they're still 300 DPI, just a little bit smaller uh, size wise compared to the regular canvas that I usually use. But if you are going back through your artwork, just make sure that it is at least 300 DPI and, you know, pretty big. I would say 2000 by 2000 would be the, the lowest that I would go for printing on, on the books. Um, so if you are using uh, you know, an iPad that doesn't give you a lot of layers. This is one of those cases that it really doesn't matter if you're making new artwork because you're just going to be doing lines. So that's one of the, the bonuses for this. It really doesn't matter which iPad you're using. If you don't know the difference between the layers and the available layers in Procreate, check out my what iPad should I buy in 2019 video. I explain it all there. So let's go ahead and click on this one as our first one, a chicken caught in a copying machine. And you'll see, I'll just go ahead and turn off these layers here and we are left with basically a coloring book page ready to go so i'm going to go ahead and export this go up to the wrench icon here go to share i'm just going to save this as a png and save image and that's it that's ready to go we'll go to the next one and I'm gonna click down to here to this egg. So one thing to really think about too when you're doing coloring books, I'm gonna use this image today just for an example, um, but this would not be something that I would usually use in the coloring book as is. Uh, kind of put yourself into the customer's shoes. Think about if you don't color anymore, you know, when you were growing up and loved to color, you know, the bigger the page, the more stuff going on, the longer it took and the better it felt when you were done, you could get more colors in there and it just took longer and you know, it was just a better experience. So with this, there's not enough going on here. It's gonna get colored in really quick. So I would probably add in some type of background design element to this, or even, you know, a repeating pattern, something like that, just to kind of give the customer or whoever's coloring it more to do. But for the, like I said, the, the case of this video, we're gonna use it. So let's go ahead and go to the wrench icon again, share, PNG, and then we're going to save the image. And then basically just go through your images as many as you want to get those saved and ready for the next step. Um, with the coloring books, the one thing that I would really suggest is definitely use a theme. Themes are gonna sell better. There's gonna be somebody searching for, you know, cat, like, you know, the one that I did, uh, cat coloring books or dog coloring books, even just, you know, if you've got animals, you could do animals, but just combining a bunch of different types of things really doesn't make sense unless you're branding it as an artist coloring book. So if you've got a following on, you know, Instagram or on Facebook, if you've got a artist Facebook page and you can combine multiple things because it's just basically people buying it because it's your art, that's okay to do. But if you're targeting just a broad audience of coloring book enthusiasts, I would really kind of niche down on it and get something that's all in one as far as a theme goes. And then usually for numbers wise, um, the minimum number of pages that you can have on a KDP book is 24. If you're doing just the single side, that means that would be 12 different illustrations. I think 12 is just too few. Once again, think about yourself. If you were a customer, what you would want, I would say at least 20 would be the minimum. Uh, I would recommend probably 30 is the sweet spot. I wouldn't really go more than 50. So anywhere from 20 to, to 50 would be 
the kind of target number that you would want to start with. I think 30, like I said, is, is pretty much the sweet spot. So that's the other thing to consider how many you have to start out with and kind of build up your portfolio from there. And then I'm going to go ahead and save the rest of these, transfer them over to the laptop and we'll pick up on the laptop. All right, guys, so now we are over on the laptop and I've got all the designs transferred over from the iPad over to the laptop. I'm using a Mac, so some of the shortcuts that I'm gonna use here in Photoshop are gonna be Mac specific, but you can follow along if you are using Windows. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to create a new canvas. So we're gonna go up to File and we're gonna to go to New. And over here, we're gonna change this to inches. Now, like I said, with those low content, no content journals initially, a lot of people with those, the kind of typical size is six by nine. For the coloring books, I prefer eight by 10. I think it makes you know a nice standard coloring book size, but our pages are not actually going to be that eight by 10. Our illustrations aren't rather. So we need to change the size of those a little bit so they fit within the trim area. Thing to keep in mind when you're uploading books to KDP is it goes into a review process and there's an actual Amazon worker that goes through and approves or rejects your book. If there's any part of your image that is going over that trim area and you have no bleed selected, it will get rejected and kicked back to you. So that's why I use Use these dimensions to make sure that it gets approved every time it's gonna save you a lot of headaches later on so uh, that being said we're gonna make the width this 7.245 and the height is gonna be 9.4 our resolution is going to be 300 and background we want set to white RGB is fine because it's gonna print in black and white so it doesn't matter so let's hit create and this is our canvas so the first thing that I like to do is I like to put that frame around the outside of the canvas. So to do that, let's go down here to the rectangle shape fill. We want that set with a line through it. So there's no fill stroke. We want black size. I usually do a 50 pixel size here and let's just stretch this down, lock it in and then make sure that there's no white area around the edges. Make sure it's basically going to the edges of the canvas on all sides. So there we go. That's our frame. This is going to be kind of our template going forward. So now we can actually open up our objects or our illustrations. So we're going to go to file and we're going to go to open. We've got all these transferred over. So let's move those in. I've also got some other ones here that I'm going to use for the cover later and we don't need those right now. So let's press open. And we can open all of these at once. And this is one of the reasons why I love doing this in Photoshop rather than doing it in Procreate is because if you were doing this in Procreate, you would basically have to go in to your illustration. You're going to have to copy it. You're going to have to go back to gallery. Then you're going to have to select your template. Then you're going to go into that and press paste. Then you're going to have to save it. Then you're going to have to go back to the gallery, find the next image go into that, copy, go back to gallery. And as you can see, it takes a lot of time. This, you can have all these images opened in tabs across the top, and it's going to free up your workflow quite a bit. On top of that, there's another reason why I love using Photoshop, and we're gonna get to that here shortly. So let's go ahead and go to our image. Like I said with these, these are actually uh, illustrations that I use for a card game. I did not really intend to use these for a coloring book. So dimension wise, these are going to be a little off. So I'm going to have to stretch them out, which I don't really like doing or suggest doing. Cause if you've got something, you know, initially done, you kind of want it to look like it, it does right here. So these are going to look a little wonky, but for the, uh, the sake of this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and change them. Uh, the one thing I am going to do here is change the size of this canvas because if we transfer it over here let's go ahead and hit command c or control c for windows and if we go to our canvas here and control v paste it you'll see how huge this is and it's going to take a lot of work to get it back down so i don't want to mess with that and i want it to be a little bit easier so i'm going to go up here to image image size and let's just drop it down to like 30. Now we can hit Command C, we can go back in here, Command V, and then we can hit Command T to transform this 
and get it locked in to our frame. So one thing I want to do here, you'll see this image is on top. I want this in the center in between the rectangle and the background. So it's going to be underneath that frame. And what we're going to do here is just stretch this out to where these edges here kind of meet the black over here. You don't want to go too far over just because you might lose some of your design. You want to keep, you know, the most parts of your design that you can get in there. And then we're going to apply that and make sure there's no white areas here and everything matches up. So this is the second reason why I love using Photoshop. So if you do this in Procreate, I'm sure you've kind of played around with it before and noticed if you do any type of transforming the size of your lines in Procreate, it's going to pixelate it. It's going to blur it. It doesn't matter if you're going from big to small. It still does that. Uh, the only time it does that in Photoshop, if you go real small to real big, but if you're going smaller with these in Photoshop, you do not lose any quality in your line work. So that's the second reason why I recommend using Photoshop for this, uh, because with Procreate's uh, blur, when you resize, it, it just doesn't work for the coloring books as well. So you've got to be really careful. So we'll go ahead and close this one out because we're done with that. Can't remember if we saved this as I was talking or not. So let's go ahead and save as. Let's go to page one. We'll just save it in the fluster clucked. And format, we can just save it as a PNG or a ping. So let's go ahead and save. All right. Now we're going to go to image two. Once again, I'm going to go up to image, image size. Just drop that to that 30 to make it a little bit more manageable. I'm going to command C to copy. Go over here. We're going to hit delete to delete that one. And command V for that one to paste in there. And then we're going to go to file. We're going to go to save as. We'll do page two. Save as a PNG. Save. And we can go over here and close that out. You can kind of see how fast this is going now. So we're going to go to this one. Image size 30. Command C, go over here, we're gonna hit delete. And like I did this before, this is only gonna delete that one layer because it's the only one selected over here. And then we're gonna hit Command V to get that in there. Command T to stretch it. And just pull that down. And we'll go ahead and save this. So this is a very wash, rinse, repeat type of process. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up off camera to kind of speed things along. And when I come back, these will all be prepped, ready to go, and we'll hop on over to InDesign. All right, so I've got all of the pages prepped in Photoshop. They are all saved, ready to go. So now we're hopping over to Adobe InDesign. Uh, Adobe InDesign is part of the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite. So if you do have the suite, you will have this program as well. Uh, InDesign is a publishing program. So everything is set up to make books with this. And I love the ease, simplicity of use. And it's also going to guarantee with some of the features that your book is going to come out with the right dimensions, the right margins, the right trim size to where it's not going to get rejected once you submit it to Amazon. And like I said, if you go through that, it's a huge headache and this will free up some of those headaches. So let's go ahead and hop into it. We're going to go ahead and create a new document here. And like I said, with these coloring books, we want them to be eight by 10. So let's change this to inches and eight by 10. Now the number of pages, like I said before, with my coloring sheets and the pages, I like to only have the coloring page on one side of the sheet. I don't like to have them back to back. So with that in mind, you're basically going to take the number of coloring pages or illustrations that you have and double it. So with this Fuster Cluck that I just prepped, I've got 25 different illustrations. So it's basically going to be a 50 page book. However, with the Fudo Cats one that I showed at the beginning of the video, like I said, I do like to have a This Book Belongs To page on the front and then also have a copyright page on the back of that. So that's going to increase it by two. So 25 times two is 50, and then another two pages is going to, going to be 52. And then down here, this is the next most important part. And this is already set up from me previously doing one, but pay special attention to the margins. Once again, like I said, you do not want to get rejected. The human goes through and reviews this at Amazon. And if anything's touching the trim edges, if you've got somebody that's having a bad day, they will probably reject it. So 0.3 inches for the top margin, 0.3 for the bottom, 
0.425 for the inside and 0.33 for the outside. Those are the margins that I suggest going with. So let's go ahead and hit create. And this is going to create our book document. So you've got the single first page here, but once you get down past page one, you'll see it actually has the double page spread. So you can see what it's going to look like once your book is actually printed. And it kind of helps you visualize once you get going. So like I said too, I'm using a Mac. So some of these controls are going to be Mac specific on the shortcuts, but uh, you can follow along with Windows as well. First thing we wanna do is insert our first image into here. So to do that, we're gonna hit Command D, or if you're on uh, Windows, I believe probably Control D. And I saved everything under final pages. However, I did not make a page one for this. If you did make a, a first page this book belongs to, you can place that here. So instead, I'm just, just going to uh, make this by hand. You can get kind of creative with this too. You know, if you want to kind of do a repeating pattern of some of your designs to uh, kind of make it more interesting rather than just throwing, you know, plain text in here. I know with that Fudo Cats one, I just did a repeating design of one of the uh, Sushi Cats. So that's possible too. And we'll just type this in here real quick. Change the font to get something a little bit more exciting. There we go. And we'll get the line under there. There we go. And then on the back side of this, like I said, that's usually where I'll do the copyright page. You can enter in, you know, artist information or illustrator information. You'll just basically go over to the T, make a bounding box, center this text. Once again, select something a little bit more fun, make it a little bit bigger. And we'll just put uh, copyright. 2019 Mr. Clucked Books. This is where you can go ahead and put author, illustrator, or publishing information. Then also, if you you know have a website that you want to direct people to, you can put that here. We're gonna hit the arrow here to kind of resize this and just pull it down a little bit further. Okay, so now we're ready to actually insert the images. So with the arrow selected here, I'm gonna click on this page here, hit Command D or Control D on Windows, go into our final pages, and just go down to page one, and just hover over here, left click on the mouse, and then just drag this in. And you'll see it locks perfectly in to that trim size bounding box. Um, and the reason is, is because we made that 7.245 by 9.4 canvas on Photoshop. It saves us a lot of headaches once we actually get into InDesign. We don't have to do any resizing. It just goes directly into that box. It's perfect every time. So once again, Control D, and we'll go to page two. Click in here, just drag it up, and it's going to snap perfectly into that box. Believe me, this saves so much headaches as far as trying to transform this and get it to lock into that box right. So that's why it's very important in Photoshop to make that canvas size. It's going to save you a ton of time once you get in here. So the next thing that we're going to do is, like I said, uh, KDP does not play nice with blank pages. So I usually put a description at the bottom here of the illustrations on the front. So this page here is going to be the backside of this page here. So we'll just call this guy lost in thought. So let's make a text box here. Once again, let's center it. Make it bigger and change the font to something more fun. There we go. So we're going to call it lost in thought. 
and I'll pull this down a little bit to have it more towards the bottom and we still want it centered here there we go okay so once again this is where you can save yourself a ton of time with the arrow selected here click on this text box and hit command C or control C to copy now go down here to your next page so basically throughout the whole book all of the illustrations are going to be on the right side of the spread all of your text is going to be on the left side rather than having to do that text box every time what we're going to do like i said we copied this one we're going to go down to this box here left click your mouse in here right click your mouse paste in place and it's going to put this box in there perfectly every time all you have to do is then go back in and change the text but once again left click on the box right click paste in place left click right click paste in place left click right click paste in place and so on and so forth kind of gets to be a muscle memory playing the piano type of thing but it goes so fast and then once you're done you can go back in like i said just grab the text tool double click in here and change it but this way you know that everything is uniform um, the text is going to appear on the exact same spot of every single page you're not going to have to worry oh is it higher or lower from this page to the next so it makes it really nice and really quick to do that and then like i said just click in this box again and command d to insert another page drop that in here and then once again it's a very wash rinse repeat cycle so i'm going to go ahead finish this up and then once i'm done i'll come back and show you guys how to export your pdf to get ready to publish on amazon okay so i've got all of the illustrations imported and placed uh into indesign and then also changed all of the text on the left hand side as you can see like i said all of the right hand pages contain the coloring book illustrations the right hand or the left hand side contains the text that refers back to what's on that previous page so that way you don't have any blank pages you can see everything lines up really well everything is perfectly even between the pages so it's going to look super professional once it gets printed out you might notice on the illustrations themselves they do look pixelated in the program but once you export them to the pdf guarantee they are 100 percent perfect so don't worry about that if they look a little bit pixelated inside indesign that is not a problem so we're going to go ahead and export this now everything that you upload covers and interiors on kdp have to be pdfs so keep that in mind and we're going to go ahead and go up to file we're going to go to exports and let's call this fuster clucked inside save it to our folder and we want the format to be adobe pdf print we're going to hit save all of these settings just the standard are fine you do not have to mess with anything here just go ahead and hit export it says there's overset text on page one so we need to fix that uh, let's see what i think it's when i was doing that yeah when i was doing the lines there that one got a little bit messed up so let's delete that out now we should be good let's try it again export now uh, we got to change the name of it so let's export inside final export and you'll see next to this rocket ship there's a little bar here that's kind of the progress of the background tax tasks so we'll let that go as soon as this is done then we will hop on over to kdp and show you exactly what to do next okay so let's actually hop on over to kdp on amazon this is the first time in the video we're going to be doing that i've got a private safari window open here just so you can see what it looks like without actually being logged in so we'll go to kdp.amazon.com and this is going to be the welcome page shows you basically a, a welcome video that you can watch about self-publishing on amazon then gives you the account sign in over here this top one is if you already have an amazon account the bottom one if you don't have an amazon account need to sign up now this is the same account that you're going to use for purchasing on amazon so i'm assuming by now most people have an account on amazon but if you don't you can sign up for one 
But if you do have an Amazon account, just sign in. That same account that you use for buying on Amazon will allow you to sell as well. Eventually in the process, you will have to set up your tax information because every sale that you make is taxable. So you will have a 1099 sent by Amazon at the end of the year in your account. So you will need to file taxes on that. And then you also have to sign up for your bank account information so that you can actually get paid once you start selling books. So that's a little bit different there than the regular, you know, just purchasing account. Pretty straightforward. I'm not going to walk you guys through it here. If you do have questions down in the comments, let me know. But if you've signed up for anything before, set up any type of accounts online, it's pretty straightforward. So I think you'll be able to figure it out. So let's go ahead and close this out and let's hop on over then to Google Chrome. And this is what it actually looks like once you sign in. You've got your bookshelf, which is gonna have all your live or in draft books that you've ever created. The report section to where you can track your sales, community where there's frequently asked questions and just kind of support and then also forums and then KDP select, which we're not gonna talk about today because we're just gonna focus on making paperback books. So that's what we wanna do. The paperback option is right here. But first we need to create a cover. So the the links in here in the navigation are kind of wonky sometimes trying to find what you need so i just usually have it bookmarked but if not just type in kdp cover template on google and it'll bring you to the first link right here to where you can download the cover template so the reason you have to do this and you have to change it every time is because as a book has more pages in it that spine grows thicker so it's going to change the overall dimensions of that cover so you actually need to tell it you know what you have inside the book. So first we're gonna select a trim size and this is going to be eight by 10. And then the page count, if you remember, we had the 52 pages in our book. So we'll type in 52 here. Paper color, I always go with white for the coloring books. And then download cover template. That's gonna download a zip file. Let's go ahead and open that. And you'll see there's actually two different files here. There's the PDF and uh, the ping or the PNG. So let's go ahead and use the PNG. We're going to open that with Photoshop. Now there is actually a cover creator on KDP itself, but if you're an artist, if you're used to using, you know, Procreate Photoshop, so on and so forth, I recommend and prefer using Photoshop to to create the covers just gives you a lot more control over what you're doing. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I already uh, saved and transferred over some files that I'm going to use for the cover. And these I usually like to use, you know, pretty bright, bold stuff that's going to stand out. This is what people are going to first see when they're flipping through your listing. So uh, let's go ahead and command C the title here and we'll put this in here, Command-T to transform. And basically what we want is everything to be in these white areas. So the black lines, that's the trim size. That's where it's gonna cut off. The red area is what they call it, or the, I call it pink or peach. This is where the out of live or bleed section is gonna be. Like I said before, I don't really like to mess with bleeds just because you do have that problem sometimes of them kicking it back. So just to be safe and so you don't cause yourself more work later, I just keep everything inside that white area. They're automatically gonna add in a UPC barcode and that goes right here. You don't have to mess with that. That gets added in automatically. So, so we've got the uh, the name up here. Let's go ahead and we'll close that out now that we're done with it. Let's get these guys in here. I'll flip them around first. Oops, let's unlock that. Right, copy these guys. Paste them in here. Of course, that's a lot bigger than what we need, so we're gonna have to shrink that down. And usually I would bring in, you know, PNGs or pings with no background, a transparent background, so you don't have to mess with this white, but I'm actually gonna make the background white, so I'm not really worried about it, to be honest. I do need to bring that down underneath the title, though. Like I said, since we're making this whole background white, we don't have to worry about these overlaps. That's gonna be totally fine. And I'll usually put in like a little blurb underneath here. So let's switch our font. 
back to what we're using over on the interior and we'll just call this a oops change the color of the font to black so we can see what we're doing let's call it a hilarious shrink this down a little bit chicken coloring book shrink it down a little bit more there we go move that down a tad and maybe make the logo a little bit bigger okay so now we're gonna go on to the back side here I'm gonna copy control C this logo and paste it over here because I also want it on the back I'll shrink it down just a little bit I think I need to shrink this other one down too just because of the shadow so I'm gonna delete that and copy and paste it back over That's one thing I like too with Photoshop. You get these lock-in guides here so you know it's centered and you know it's centered here with your other page, the other side of the book, which is nice. Then usually under here, I will put in what's contained inside. So let's say uh, we had 25 images. So let's see, 25. Twenty-five crazy chickens for you to color. And then we'll put featuring at the front of this. Okay. And then usually what I'll do too is I will put in some of the blank pages on the back so that you can see them. So we're just going to import a few of those. We'll go to final pages. These have that black outline around them, so it kind of looks a little bit more finished. And with these, I usually do a row of three or six. It's up to you. This one, I'm going to do three, and I recommend probably picking like the strongest three or the three that you like the best out of the set of designs that you have. So we'll just pick three of these real quick. Press open. And let's shrink these down. Go image size and let's just do three for each of them make it a little bit easier to transform once we get them over there there we go so we're going to command c this one go back to our book command v oops unlock it first I think it's locked yeah if that's the case if you can't copy it that lock needs to be turned off so now we can copy it paste that in there and I kind of just want a row of these so put this one over here we'll probably have to shrink these down a little bit more to get them to fit we'll know a little bit better once we actually get them all three over here so there's the first one. We're done with this. So let's close it out. Done with this one. Paste him in there. Whoops. Forgot to unlock it again. There we go. Command C. Command V. And once again, it's nice in Photoshop because we can transform these and we're going to know when they're lined up you can bring this one underneath to make sure the width is correct too and then move it back once we see those pink lines locked in we know that we are good all right let's go ahead and close that one out and do our final one oops not sure why that reset like that Once 
once again, I put it underneath here just to get the same width. And then put it back up top. Oops. Put it back up top to get the same height to it. There we go. Let's unlock this one. Command C and then Command V over here. And shrink this one down. There we go. Make sure the height is the same. All right, those are good. So now what we're going to do, of course, these extend past there. So I'm going to merge these together so we can kind of adjust them all as a group. So I'm going to hit Command E and Command E again. Now you'll see all three of these are the same layer. We're going to Command T to transform them and make sure that they fit evenly in this little area that we've got. So that looks good. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in, I've got another little guy here. I'm going to put him down in the corner. So we will Command C him. He's not locked. And command V and transform him down and get him here right in the corner. go down a little bit more and then I think I'm gonna actually go ahead and erase his little word bubble here let's get that out of there so I'm just gonna lasso this and command X just to drop that out uh, actually let's lasso it again let's take a step back so command Z and instead of dropping it out, I think I'm just going to move it over here because it looks kind of empty down here at the bottom. So there we go. So I might spend a little bit more time on this, um, maybe put in some extra words down here. But just wanted to get you, get you guys the idea of how my process works once I'm in Photoshop. But now we need to get rid of all this stuff in the background. So what we're going to do, we're going to turn off these layers. We're going to add a new layer at the very bottom. And this layer, we are just going to fill this in with white, then turn everything back on. And this is going to be our final finished cover. So that is pretty much it. I think, uh, I think everything looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and last thing, I want to make these guys just a little bit bigger here. Move them down. And that's about it. So we'll go ahead and turn this back on. Now, like I said before, we need to save these as PDFs. They need to be uploaded as PDFs. So let's go up here, File, Save As. And we're going to save this to the Fuster Clucked. And we'll call it FC Cover. Need to change this to PDF. Photoshop PDF. And Save. And then just go ahead and hit save PDF. You don't need to change anything on here. Hit yes. And that is it. It is ready to be uploaded. So let's hop back on over to Chrome. Okay, so now that we've got our cover exported as a PDF, we've got our interior exported as a PDF, we are ready to actually upload this to Amazon. So once again, back to kdp.amazon.com and we wanna go to add paperback, this button right here. So we're gonna click that and it is gonna take us over to our paperback details page. So you can see the first thing that comes up here is language, English is selected by default. Next up is book title. So with ours, it is called Fuster Clucked. Now the book title is very important too because number one, you have to have a book title printed on the cover of the book. If it's not on the cover, it has to be on the spine. And like I said, with these coloring books, they're lower page count and sometimes you can't put text on the spine so you're going to have to have it on the front cover if it's not on there it's going to get rejected also if the book title here typed in doesn't match what's on the front cover it's going to get rejected as well so if you remember with ours we had fuster clucked and then we had a hilarious uh chicken coloring book underneath as long as you put in fuster clucked that is fine you can have extra words on there but as long as the main title is on all the cover and also in the book title 
you are good. With the subtitle, this you don't ex actually have to have this on the book itself. You can use this as a descriptor. You can put some extra keywords in there. You do not want to keyword stuff this, though. It is not what that's for. Uh, but with ours, we actually had a hilarious chicken coloring book, and that's what I'm going to use on here. But like I said, this does not actually have to be featured on the cover. It is optional, and you can put in something different. So keep that in mind. So we'll get this in coloring book next up is series information we're not going to use that edition number not going to use that either author you do have to have an author name so this is where it gets fun you can put your name you can put a pen name make up a name for yourself or you can actually make a brand or a company name which is actually what we're going to do with this so we're going to tab over if you use a brand name put it all in the last name field so it comes up as one line on the amazon product page so we're going to call this uh, Fuster Collect Books. Next up is Contributors. So this you can add an extra author. Uh, if you have a couple of illustrators working on this you want to give credit towards, you can uh, select multiple illustrators and add another and go on with that. But we're going to leave that blank and not do anything there. And then the description. So this is the important part. This is the part that appears on your Amazon uh, detail page for your book. So this is where you kind of want to describe the book, who it's for, a call to action, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll say this hilarious adult coloring book features 25 crazy chickens for you to color. I'm kind of going to target this um, towards grown-ups just because there is a selection down here, adult content, does this book contain language situations or images inappropriate for children under 18 years of age. Uh, since this does have like the one illustrations, the chicken with its head cut off, and there's some other ones that are kind of blue, I'm going to go ahead and just click yes on that. So that allows me kind of up here to add more of the, the grown up and adult stuff in the description. So this hilarious adult coloring book features 25 crazy chickens for you to color. Grownups who love to color or are chicken lovers will adore this funny coloring book. These zany chickens find themselves in the craziest predicaments and makes the perfect gift for anyone with a sarcastic sense of humor. Grab a copy for you or a loved one today. Okay, and as you can see, there's 4,000 characters here. I might go into a little bit more detail. Uh, but with the time limit of this video, I want to keep it, you know, fairly short. I know it's pushing probably an hour by the time this is all said and done, so I'm not going to go super crazy into here. But publishing rights, I own the copyright and hold necessary publishing rights. Keywords, so this is where you can get fun. You can choose up to seven keywords to describe your book. And the keywords, this is not seen by the customers on Amazon. So if you're a part of Merch by Amazon, you cannot keyword stuff. But here, you kind of have a little bit more leeway just because this is not gonna be seen by the customer. It's on the back end so your products can be found. So what we're gonna do is 
the best way to do this, look up some other books that are already, you know, getting sales and see what keywords that they use or on Amazon using the autofill feature. When you search things, you can kind of see what some of the words that would pertain to somebody buying this book would be. I actually went through and did a notepad here. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of drag some of these in here. Let's bring this, shrink it down. So for this first line, chicken, joke, farm, uh, animals, farming, farmer, present. This one's coloring, activity book, crayons, colored pencil. Uh, I think I had markers in there. Oh, not enough room for that. I think maybe that's on the next line. Yeah, markers, dad jokes, puns, dark humor, witty sarcasm. Sarcastic, which I use sarcastic up top, so let's use sarcasm instead. Try not to repeat and get as much bang for a buck as we can on the lines. Next one was hen, rooster, chickens, pop culture, punny. Next one, cute artist, artist, or art, artist, cartoon, adorable animation. Next one, outlines, baby chicks, culinary, fun, easy, relaxing. And the last one, I went in and just kind of looked up some other terms that are used in the chicken community. So bantam, bitty, broiler, brooder, cock, pullet, and waddles. Those are different chicken terms. So we'll put those in there as well. Next up is our categories. So this one is important to select the categories that pertain to what your coloring book is shooting for. Usually I would use a juvenile nonfiction, but with this one, like I said, towing that line of kind of blue humor, I didn't want to risk it and put it under uh, the adult content no here. So we're not going to use juvenile fiction. We're just going to use nonfiction. And we'll go to art and just go to general for that one. And then let's see what else. Something with chicken. So maybe nature. I know animals are actually a, a subset under the juvenile nonfiction, but for adults, I think it's just, yeah, it's under animals here and you could do birds but I think with birds they kind of you know tend to be more non-farm animal type birds so we're just going to go ahead and do animals general so we've got art general and non fiction nature animals general this is book containing language situations or images inappropriate like I said I don't really want to toe the line so on this I would probably pick yes and then hit continue okay so this is the paperback content page this is where you get assigned a free ISBN so click on that and then assign ISBN if you have one you can use your own but I don't think many people have those laying around publication date just leave this blank it's automatically gonna put in the date that it goes live print options like I said for coloring books we want the black and white interior with white paper Trim size, we need to change this to 8 by 10. Oops, select a different size. So we'll select 8 by 10. We want no bleed. And paperback finish, this is up to you if you want matte or glossy. I usually choose glossy. And now it's time to upload our paperback manuscript. So we're going to click this. And this is where we select that interior that we made in InDesign. That was on our desktop. Wait for a second to this uh, for this to upload. These go fairly quick. The manuscript and the book cover uploads. It's once you get down to this book preview down here that takes forever. So keep that in mind too. Once I get to that point, I'll actually kind of pause the video and start it back up once that gets to the preview part. So this is where I talked about earlier too. There is a cover creator in KDP or on KDP. Uh, if you're an artist though, if you're already using Procreator or Photoshop, I like having the extra control of those programs. So that's why I do not use the one on here. That's why we did it earlier in Photoshop. So we're going to upload a cover that we already have. Upload your cover file. That's our cover. 
It's going to spin for a second. Like I said, these go fairly fast. The other one, the book for you takes so long. It's actually a joke inside the uh, pop-up window that comes up. It says you might want to grab a sandwich because it can take a while. So once these kick then, this will actually, there we go, become a clickable button. So we're going to hit launch previewer. It's going to save and it's going to start to process. So I'll go ahead and pause the video here. We'll start back up once this gets prepared. Okay, so our print previewer is finally loaded and this is what it looks like when you have it finished you'll see it first comes up on the cover it's got the front cover and the back cover we're looking for here we want to make sure everything is inside the red cut lines the trim size and it looks perfect everything is good i'm going to click on to the next page this is the this book belongs to page looks good now on to the actual interiors and here is exactly why we sized everything like we did in Photoshop and on InDesign. It's because this frame is perfectly within the trim boundaries. This box is where you need to worry about. If anything is touching on the sides or is out, it will probably get kicked back to you. So by using those dimensions that I gave you in Photoshop and on InDesign, it guarantees that your size is perfect for printing and it will not get kicked back. We'll see our descriptions for the previous page perfectly centered down here and everything fits within those trim guidelines. So it looks really, really fantastic. So once everything is good to go, just click down here to approve. And it's gonna take you back to that paper book or paperback content page that we just filled out shows you what your printing cost is down here so we're going to go ahead and save and continue and this is going to take us to the pricing page so this is going to save and kick us over to the pricing page and here's where you can kind of play around so all territories worldwide rights is first selected if you want to select individual territories you can but why not sell it everywhere so i just leave that selected now the primary marketplace amazon.com this is where you click in your list price uh, with this definitely do your research if you've got other competitors in your niche and other coloring books you kind of want to see what other people are pricing at usually for these books in like the 30 page price or 30 page range i usually price around in between 495 and 595 and you can put in the list price here and you're going to see what it kicks back with so once again, with this, you're not going to get super rich off of it. It's, you know, very low royalties, but at the same time, it's a pretty high percentage compared. When you're only charging $5.95 for something, uh, the royalty being $1.42, that's a pretty good percentage. And people are going to be more apt to spend, you know, $5.95 on a cheap gift than they are sometimes on spending, you know, $20, $25 for a t-shirt. So just because you have a loyal or a lower royalty here, the percentage kind of makes up for it because you might see more sales from a book like this than what you would from a t-shirt. And also with the coloring book space, it's not as congested as what the t-shirts are. So this is definitely a good way to jump in early and get some really interesting, fun coloring books up there for the, the people to buy. So we'll just go ahead and do $5.95 for this one. Actually, I'd, I'd probably go $4.95 for this one since it is less than the 30 pages. That's going to drop it down to $0.82. Cents. I'd like to maybe make at least a dollar off of each one, though. So we'll do $5.05. Nope. Let's do $5.50. We'll see what that is. $5.50 is $1.15. So let's go ahead and keep it at $5.50. Expand distribution. You can click this. You'll see the royalties only five cents, but this is kind of cool because expanded distribution is where somebody can walk into say Barnes and Noble and order your book. So if they don't have Amazon and you still want to make sales, it's definitely a good way to get your name out there, especially if you're using it as a promotional piece. If you've got your website in there, if you've got it directing people to your social media page or your website, it does work as a form of advertisement. And if somebody does not have access to Amazon, if they don't feel comfortable ordering online, they can walk into a brick and mortar store and actually place an order. So you're still making something and you're getting a book out there. So let's go ahead and click that. 
And then the last thing that we want to do is just go ahead and click on publish your paperback book, which like I said, I'm not putting this one up. This is just for an example. So I'm not going to click on that, but that is the last step. And then basically what it'll do is it will go into a review process. It'll show in review. Someone at Amazon takes a look at it. And if there's a problem, they'll kick it back along with an email telling you exactly what to fix. Otherwise it's going to go live and it's going to be available for purchase on Amazon. So that is the complete walkthrough of all the steps that I use to create a coloring book using Procreate, Photoshop, InDesign, and then KDP. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you got some value out of today's video, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell for notifications too, so you can get alerted when I post new videos. And speaking of new videos, I'm going to turn this into a new series talking about different ways that you can turn your artwork into money online. I'm also going to be bringing on some other professional artists onto the channel. We're going to be doing some live interviews to give you guys some other backgrounds of people making making money professionally with their artwork. They're going to talk about how they got their start and how they monetize their art. Also, keep creating a Learn, Draw, Share art community over on Facebook. If you guys haven't joined yet or are new to the channel, there's a link in the description below. Make sure you hop on over there and join. There's people sharing their artwork all the time. It's become a really fun community and want to have you guys join as well. So what do you guys do to make money with your art? Let me know in the comments or if there's any platforms you want to hear me talk about, make sure you let me know. As for me, I can be found online at bjdell.com as well as on Instagram and Twitter at bjdell. So until next time, keep creating.